Today I'm going to be showing you how to crochet strips of double crochet stitches together as you go to form these really lovely patchwork blankets. Now this is excellent for stash busting. You can just use up all your scraps and you make great big long strips of double crochet and then you add to them widthwise to get your blanket. I'm going to show you how you join to your strip of pre-made crochet and I'm going to show you how you maintain this absolutely razor sharp straight edge. So grab your yarn, grab your hook and let's begin. To begin, pop a slip knot onto your hook. Now there is no pattern multiple to worry about. We're simply going to chain as wide as you would like your first strip to be. Now in my blanket that I showed you in the introduction, I chained 25 using double knit yarn for my sort of strips, but you're free to make them as wide or as narrow as you like. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to make a really small sample for you today. So I'm going to go ahead and chain 12. Once you have the desired amount of chains, we're going to work into the fourth chain from your hook. Now this loop on your hook doesn't count as anything. You want to count the fully formed chains, one, two, three, four. And into that fourth chain, we're going to place a double crochet stitch. Now for these type of scrap blankets, I actually like to work into the back bump of the chain. So at the front, you have these little Vs, and if you rotate it over, you can see you have these little bumps. This is entirely optional. You just put your hook in wherever you want. The only reason I work into the back bump is it gives me a nice bottom edge, which looks like the top of stitches. So it matches the top edge, meaning I don't need to put a border on it because it all just looks exactly the same top and bottom and on the sides. So I'm going to work into the back bumps. So count back four chains, one, two, three, four and into that fourth chain work a double crochet stitch now as I say I'm working under the back bumps you don't have to those skipped chains count as a double crochet stitch now we're going to place a double crochet into every chain all the way along Once you finish this very first row, it's worth just making a note of how many stitches you have. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, plus my chain three. So I have 10 stitches in total. So I now know that for every strip I go on to attach widthwise, I need to chain 12 and I will have 10 stitches. That just keeps all your strips the same width but it is your scrap blanket. If you want different width strips, that is also entirely up to you. Now, how I keep my edges poker straight. For round two, I am not going to chain. I'm simply going to turn my work. Now I flip it like that so the yarn is at the back. So I'm just rotating it around and then into this very first stitch, I'm going to work a single crochet. No chaining, just a single crochet. Now I'm going to stack another single crochet on top here. So I'm going to place my hook into this little vertical bar here. And make another single crochet stitch. This way I have a nice fat stitch to begin with and a straight edge. Now double crochet in every single double crochet across the row. So we have our stacked single crochet, that's one stitch. It's my second. I'm going to work all the way along 
just working double crochets. Then when I get to this very end, I'm going to work a double crochet into the top of those skipped chains from the very first row. I'm just going to pop my hook in and work a double crochet. I should have exactly the same number of stitches as I did in the row below. Now for row three and every other row in your strip, you're going to flip your work, just turn it, yarn will be at the back. Work a single crochet into that very first stitch. Then work a single crochet into that loop. So you're stacking two single crochets on top of each other and then work a double crochet to every stitch all the way along. Don't forget to work into the top of that stacked single crochet at the end there. So you'll have a little side chain and then the V's on top go into the V's on top. Just treat it like a normal stitch. And repeat this third row back and forth until your strip is the length that you want it to be. If you're anything like me, you're going to be working with scrap yarns, which means at some point you are going to run out of the colour you're working with. So I'll show you how you change colour at the end of a row and also how to change midway through just in case your yarn runs out. So if you want to change colour at the end of the row, on the very last stitch you're going to start your double crochet, yarn over, pull through, you've got three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, then drop the current colour you're working with and bring in your new colour. Now leave a nice tail for weaving in afterwards and we're simply going to drape this new colour yarn over the hook and pull it through those last two loops to complete the stitch. Now you can trim off the old colour Oops. and if you'd like a little bit of extra security take this tail from your new colour and the tail from the old colour and you can just knot them just gently for now and that holds it until it is ready to be woven in. Then you can continue crocheting with your new colour. So as we're at the end of the row just flip your work. If you want to crochet over your tails you can. Totally up to you. I'll leave mine hanging for now. And for changing colour in midway through a row, when you see that your yarn is coming to an end, crochet some stitches with it, but don't take it right till the point where you've got just a tiny little centimetre of yarn. You want to leave nice, generous lengths of tail to work with for weaving in and making sure that your blanket will have years of use. So I reckon I can maybe get one more stitch out of this. So I'm going to change colour on the very next stitch and the principle is exactly the same as how we did it on the sides you're going to yarn over go into your stitch drop a loop three loops on your hook yarn over pull through the first two and then drop the color you're currently working with and bring in the new color loop it over your hook and just draw that through to complete the stitch again if you want to just pop in a little tiny knot, this is entirely optional. I just find when you're working with scrap yarns, often you'll be frequently changing colour and it's just easier just to pop in a little, just a knot just to hold it for now. And then you are free to continue crocheting with your new colour.
That way you have changed color in the middle of the row, but it's still nice and neat. And you've got these ends at the back, which you can weave in afterwards. So once your strip is the length that you want it to be, I'm just going to stop and have this be my final row. Once you have completed the length of your very first strip, to finish, once you have done your very final stitch and you're happy with the length of the strip, chain one, cut your yarn again, leaving a decent tail length to weave in, pull it up, pull it out, pull it tight and your first strip is complete. Now it's definitely worth taking a moment just to weave your ends in now. When weaving in your tails do not weave in that very first tail of the beginning where you did your slip knot for your chain. Keep that one so you know which is this corner of the blanket. You'll be glad of keeping this one until the very end. But as for all the others, weave them in. So once all those ends are woven in and you have left your very, very first tail, you want that tail to be on the left hand side of your work as we are building these strips in this direction. So we're always going to be joining to the bottom and working another strip up on this side. That way you know that you are keeping everything in the same direction, especially if you pop your work down in like a, a basket to come back to later when you've got more scraps, you'll always know that this is the bottom left hand corner of your blanket. All right, so to create your second strip, and to join it as you go. So we're going to do a really nice close join so there's no gaps in between your strips. So with your tail on the left hand side, you want to count your stitches. I know that I've got 10, including these skipped chains from the very first row. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's the bottom of my ninth stitch here. And so I've got my skipped chains from that very, very first row, and that's where we need to work into. So I can see here, this is the bottom of my stitch. So this is the bottom of my skipped chains. So I'm going to pop my hook in to that back bump. It's a little bit fiddly and then I'm going to pop it through the work. That way I have two loops of the chain on my hook. Now, if you can't quite find that back bump, just pop your hook in through the chain and try and catch two loops if you can. Ideally, you want two loops on one side of your hook and just one on the other. So wherever you pop it in, try and get two. If you can't, it is not the end of the world. It's just a scrap blanket, but this just gives you a really secure join rather than just going through one loop. If you've gone through and you've got two, it's just a bit better. But like I say, not the end of the world if you can't. Then we're going to join our new color for our new strip. Now how you join it is completely up to you. I like to have a slip knot, but you don't have to. You can just pull it through. I'm just going to pop a slip knot on my hook and I'm going to draw that through those loops of that chain. So I say it's a bit fiddly. Oops. I pulled too hard. Hold on, let me try that one again. Be more gentle than me. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we have got our yarn, new color, through the chain, the bottom chain of the old one. 
Now we're going to do exactly what you did for your very first strip. And for me, that was chaining 12. So I'm going to go ahead and chain 12. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I'm chaining off in this direction. Now, just like before, I'm going to work my first double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook, and I am going to work into the back bumps. If you can't find the back bumps or you prefer working into the front of the chain, that is absolutely fine. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to work my nine double crochet stitches. These skip chains on this very first row of each strip count as your first double crochet. I know I need 10 stitches in total. And my very last stitch will go into that chain that we joined with. So you can see, because I'm working into the back bumps, it's on the top. Otherwise, you'd just work into the side. So this very last chain, pop your last stitch in there. Take a moment to double check you've got the correct amount of stitches. I should have 10, including those skip chains. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I know this strip is the same width as this first strip. Now to join it, just get this tail out of the way. We want it to join in line with the first row that you did on your first strip. So at the top of these skipped chains on your very first strip that you did, right in the top, we're going to slip stitch just into there. So almost at the bottom of that double crochet on the second row. So just pop your hook through and slip stitch. Now to move up a row, chain one, my yarn is hiding at the back of this strip. When I personally crochet this, I tend to work more on a sort of horizontal, but I need to show you on camera so you can see <laughs> how it's lining up. So you'll find it's easier if you turn your work slightly. So we've slip stitched to joined, chain one, and then find the top of the double crochet on that second row. You'll often spot like a little hole in between and in there we're going to work a single crochet stitch. So we've moved up a row. Now turn your work. It's a bit easier if you bring your yarn with you. So as you flip, your yarn is going to be at the back waiting for you. But if it's in the front, honestly, don't worry. These sorts of tiny details don't make a massive difference. So now we're going to start working on the second row of this second strip. Now, if we were just to launch straight into making double crochet stitches, you would be left with a bit of an ugly gap in the middle, and it would look like you had one too many stitches because of this little joined one. So what we do to fill in this little section here, because you don't want big ugly gaps in the middle of your blanket, is we're going to work a double crochet two together over the next two stitches. 
So this stitch immediately here, that very last double crochet that you did of the row below, yarn over, go into that very first stitch and draw up a loop. Three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two of them and then stop. So that's half a double crochet on your hook. Ignoring that now, yarn over again and go into the very next stitch and draw up a loop. So now you will have four loops on your hook. Yarn over, draw through two. Now you've got two half finished stitches hanging from your work and three loops on your hook. To finish this double crochet two together, yarn over and pull through all three loops. So that fills in this little section here and gives it a bit more bulk and maintains your stitch count. So instead of now having one stitch too many, we've now reduced it, so we should be back to your normal count. This will become more apparent on the return pass when we come back. But for now, for the rest of your strip, back to normal double crochets. So double crochet into every single stitch, including the top of that chain three, those skipped chains from that very first row. So don't forget, right at the very end here, you want to work your final double crochet into those skipped chains. Now moving forwards, it's going to be a two row repeat back and forth to join to this next strip. And the two rows you're going to need to repeat, I'm going to show you now. So take a note of the little chapters below because this is the section you're going to want to flip back and forth between. So turn your work. And now we're working back towards the joining side. So start as you did in all your other rows with a stacked single crochet. So that's a single crochet on top of each other to maintain those nice straight edges. Then we're going to work a double crochet all the way along until we get to this double crochet two together that we did. So I'll work this row nice and slowly with you. That's my stacked stitch to stitch number one, two, three, now I know I need 10 stitches in total for me, for my width of strip. That's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and now I hit this join part. So if I rotate it around slightly, you can see this is the top here of the double crochet two together that we did. Work a double crochet into the top of that stitch, which gives me nine. Now I need one more stitch. Where we work this next stitch is into the side of this single crochet that we made when joining. So into this stitch right here. Now, whether you go underneath it, into the gap underneath, or into the side of it, which is what I like to do, doesn't matter which bit you put your stitch through, but make the decision now what is easiest for you and continue that same process throughout your entire blanket. If you always join it the same way, it will look intentional. <laughs> so that you become unstuck if you switch it up and then you'll have uneven edges. But I like to go into the side of this single crochet. So you can see if I pull it apart slightly, there are two legs there and I try and pop my hook through the middle of them. 
and I'm going to work my double crochet in there. But as I say, if it is a bit easier for you to work underneath it into that gap there, then by all means go for it. But this is my 10th stitch and I'm going to just pop it into the side of that single crochet. So you can see I've got the two loops of it on my hook and I'm working that 10th stitch in there. So it is sitting on top of that joining stitch we did and I've still maintained 10 stitches. Now we're going to join to this first strip and just as before find the top of the stitch that corresponds with the row you're working on. So I'm on row three, three rows up top of that stitch, slip stitch. Slip stitch into that first stitch to join it. Then to move up, I'm going to chain one and single crochet into the top of the stitch on the next row. So we have moved up. Then for your return row, turn your work and we work a double crochet two together over the next two stitches. This eliminates any ugly gaps and brings your stitch count perfectly in line. If we just work normal double crochets all the way along, when we come back and do the joining, you'll be increasing and then you'll suddenly have 11 stitches because as you work into this side one, that's adding an extra one. So after the joining row, we always immediately go into a double crochet, two together, worked over these two stitches. And then continue crocheting until the end of the row. So you work those two rows as you go, joining to the row of the one that you already crocheted. <laughs> so do a really quick, quick, quick recap. For your joining row, start with your stacked single crochet stitch, double crochet all the way along. Once you hit that double crochet two together, rotate your work slightly to find the top of it. Work a double crochet in there to the top of the double crochet two together and then work a double crochet into the side or just below of the single crochet joining stitch. Then slip stitch to the top of the stitch on your first strip that's in line with the row that you're currently on. Chain one, single crochet into the top of the next double crochet on your previously made strip. That's your joining row. Then for the return pass, turn your work, double crochet, two together into those first two stitches. Then work a double crochet into every stitch all the way along. So you can see no gaps on the join, no unsightly gaps. This double crochet two together maintains your stitch count and the stacking single crochets at the beginning 
give you these beautiful polka straight edges. So you continue adding new strips, just like how you did this yellow one, changing color whenever you like, use up all those scraps. And at the end, you will have this great big, beautiful scrap blanket made up, which just gives all those little sad scraps a new lease of life. And you get a fantastic blanket. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you now go on to make beautiful, great big long crochet strips that you can crochet together as you go to get fantastic scrap blankets. So until next time, happy crocheting. Bye.